um, with Mount Stewart, we know kind of out in this area, we know we'll have some projected growth as well. And we want to get this posted. We want to show it to you first. And then from this board meeting, we'll have it posted on the website and uh, really have people test it out and make sure they can click on it and, and make it get bigger so that they can actually see the street signs or street names. It's a great map. I can definitely make out all the streets and stuff when I zoom in. So. What's that? I can make out all the streets and good. all that when I zoom in. It's yeah. a great map. This is yeah, this is great. I think it works pretty good too. So so now any questions? You guys. I have appreciated that uh, the notes from these meetings have been posted on the website uh, mm -hmm. the all the time. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I agree, and I want to thank every every member that and everyone who's participated in this. This has been a, a long process, and it's been a very thorough process. Um, I loved all the points, shorter ride times. I remember as a kid, I had to be on a bus at least for an hour because I was at the very end of the route, and it was a long. And then transfer station to eliminate those sounds great. Um, I love the efficiencies. I know we've really struggled, and as a nation, we struggle with hiring bus drivers right now. So just the efficiencies that, that are there. And then that concept of community schools is great too. So all of that is wonderful. So really my only question is, is what, everything sounds good. So what possibly could be bad? The only thing I can think of is that we're going to, uh, it's going to be about choice. There's going to be maybe some parents who are like, I really want my kids to go to this one school or, I went to this one school and I really want to make sure my kids go to that school. So that's just, we're basically saying we can't promise that. We have a process right. that they, uh, they can see if it's, if it's feasible, but yep. that's really it. Is there, am I missing it? Because that seems like that's really the only downfall to this with all those other great benefits to, to be in. Yes, I, I would agree. I think um, we're, so as soon as the board makes a, a decision, which we'll have up for on the 23rd, then that's, that will allow us then to start jumping in, to populate, to, um, I'm gonna bring the elementary principals together and we'll take a look at the numbers and sections at every building, uh, which will then help us to best determine looking at the number of kids, especially when Matt's able to roll over that data, we'll better be able to distinguish exactly how many openings would we have uh, in those grade levels, and um, and we'll still roll out the transfer process, but um, and we'll we'll communicate with people as much as we can around that process. But yeah, Jason, I would agree to what you said. Can you possibly speak more to staffing? I know that some people have expressed concerns uh, that staff uh, would have to to move, or we'd have. How would this affect that? Yes, um, we have had meetings already with principals with um, we met with uh, a whole committee with, from with EEA recently to talk about that. So this is huge. This is a really big change for our community. And um, I think that we just really have to acknowledge that. And we've got students that will be going to schools that are different than where they're going right now. We have staff members who uh, will uh, be potentially going to schools that are different than the ones that they're going, you know, that they're in right now. And that's why that stage will be really important once the boundaries are official uh, to look at, okay, let's say at Valley View, um, if I have four sections of third grade right now, and now I only need three sections, you know, but we have four third grade teachers and all of them want to go to the same, they all want to still teach third grade and they all want to stay at Valley View, how do we make those decisions, right? And that's what we're ironing out right now with Valley View. Um, I mean, not with Valley, with EEA to say, well, how do we best make those kinds of decisions? And um, I know that uh, that committee has went out to their membership to say where we have situations where everybody wants to stay in one place, but we don't have the need for that anymore. How do we make those decisions? Um, I did outline every step of what we're doing um, in the insider that I sent to staff. Um, and so basically, once we know the number of sections and um, the number of students at every school, 
uh, then, uh, and really all of the openings that we have right now internally uh, for teaching positions, uh, then we will start uh, the process uh, of applying first to IDA, and uh, there will be a real streamlined kind of way for, like if there's three kindergarten positions open at IDA and two teachers apply for it, are we really going to have them, you know, do letters and go through that whole process? No, we want to do a real streamlined way to for those teachers to still touch base with Joanne and, and kind of talk about why they want to be there and for Joanne to, to kind of have a conversation with them. But we're working on how to streamline that so that um, teachers, you know, who want to be somewhere can do that without having to do all the other steps like we have before. And we're keeping it, you know, internal until, we're, oops, until we're, everybody is placed uh, where they need to be. But yep, we're working very closely, uh, especially in that with that aspect of having to go somewhere, even though I didn't want to, like an involuntary, involuntary kind of process. Once again, yeah. I appreciate. Oh, sorry, I appreciate. I appreciate the process. I appreciate uh, the way this has been planned, um, and all of the conversations surrounding it. Yeah. I keep saying. Um, that I don't, I'm not sure people appreciate the amount of change that this is going to entail. One of the first things we saw was the number of students that would move, would need to move. And I keep saying, the thing I keep saying is remind people we're going from four, three schools to four, and there's no way you can do that without a bunch of people changing, right. teachers and students. And, uh, um, you know, to have this fourth school is wonderful. And um, I, there are a lot of benefits, as Jason mentioned, to this process, but there's no way this can happen without a lot of a lot of people moving, both staff and students, and not and a lot of people are not going to be happy about that. So we have to, you know, do our best to work with people, work through this transfer process, both the staff process, which Ginger just described, and the and working with parents through the the transfer process. And unfortunately, <laughs> you know, we couldn't have forecasted the pandemic, but, you know, we've, we've had a lot of changes even with that. And so um, I think more than ever, we just have to really work together, support each other, communicate, and just help each other up and over that hump. Because I think once uh, the four schools are in place and we have that transportation system, um, we're going to just really see a lot of positive things come from that. When does this high resolution map go out to parents? When do they see it? I, I wanted to be able to show it to you guys first, okay. and then it's going to get posted tomorrow as part of the board. But I thought right. it was important for you guys to see it first. All right, excellent. Any other questions? All right, board. Again, thank you, Ginger. So next up, we have policy. Um, we have policy 2409, stamp test form change. Again, this really isn't a yeah. policy that we are voting on. This is really just an update. Uh, that's right. Yeah, we just wanted you to know that we really appreciate your feedback and your support of the stamp uh, testing process. And so we did create a separate form, like we talked about at our last board meeting, um, that would not require the parent signature because um, that was becoming a barrier, especially for our uh, multilingual uh, students uh, in really being able to get credit for that and, and putting it on the, the um, transcript. And just for clarification, this isn't an action item. So um, this is really just procedural and for clarification. Board, is there any questions or any clarification on that? I appreciate you sharing it. I personally am so supportive of this and so excited to see it. So it's wonderful. Board, anything else? All right. Then that takes us to board reports. Um, our students are not here, so that will take us to teaching and learning. Tasha, do you have a report? Uh, mine is just really quick uh, and it's to uh, report that for the next two days I'll be in Olympia with that WASDA cohort um, and our required reading before it was the good to great in the social sectors. So I'll report more on what, what happens there. 
Excellent. All right, excellent. Uh, then it asks for board chair report or update. Um, board, I think you've seen some of the emails that the board has received recently. Um, we did pass the levy, but it, last time I looked, I think it was 57%. You know, I would love to see levies passed at 60 or 70%. So I think our voters are still communicating pretty strongly to us about some of those concerns. We have heard as a board, we have heard of some of those concerns, including some of the masking and some of those issues. Um, I'm glad that that's being proposed for future consideration. I think the community and board, we need to hear from our constituents um, about these issues. I also think it needs to be very transparent. I think we need to know, the community needs to know about our staff. Right, our teachers, our staff, um, we need to know where they stand on, on their concerns with safety and um, their health and well being. So, I think transparency is key for this. So, that way, everyone can understand each other. Um, and yes, if, if this is going to actually going to be loosened up where actual local control is, which is what we've been pushing for for quite some time, then, board, we will need to. Um, really hear from our community and hear from our stakeholders about um, these very important issues. So I'm excited to see where that takes us. Um, so yeah, that's my quick update. Um, that will take us into community comment. So Leslie, you want to get us ready for community comment? We don't have anyone here physically tonight in this beautiful new school, uh, other than the board. Come uh, visit us. Yes, it's, it's a great <laughs> space. Um, all right. So individuals wishing to be heard by the board will add their names to the document in the Zoom chat box, or individuals will be recognized within Zoom by using the icon or emoji to show they are raising their hand. Once the chair calls on an individual, they will identify themselves by stating their name and address for the record. Individuals will proceed to make comments within the three minute time limit. In order to provide equal opportunity for comments, an individual's microphone will be turned off at the three minute time limit. The chair may interrupt or terminate an individual statement when it is too lengthy, personally directive, abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. The board as a whole has the final decision in determining the appropriateness of such rulings. In accordance to the Open Public's Meeting Act 4230, agendas and topics must be set in advance of the meeting. Board members will not respond to public comment during the meeting. Additionally, comments may be submitted to the board at board at esd401.org. And Leslie, are we ready to open public comment? All right, we've got quite a few people on Zoom. Um, so I'd like to set maybe a timer for 30 seconds. If people can just make sure uh, you're raising your hand. And Leslie, just to verify they are able to do that, correct? All right, yeah, so go ahead and set the timer and we'll look for the hands and see if anyone here wants to do public comment tonight. Not seeing any hands yet. And Leslie's double checking. Yeah, I don't see any hands. Okay, so there, I will now close public comment. All right, uh, proposed items for future consideration. Um, I think I will just mention what Ginger had said. I think um, that is for this spot. Yes, I do think that that, that would be uh, so, what do we wanna call that? Safety protocols or updates from the? Yeah, updates and health and safety guidelines for ESD. Okay, thank you. Any other proposed items for consideration board? I have a proposed item. Uh, recently, the semester ended for our secondary students. 
uh, and ESB has put in a both a large amount of time and money into a resource called Schoology. And I was hoping to get a report on how we've invited um, grownups to support their students using Schoology. When was that information sent out? Uh, and if we could, the numbers uh, of parents who have logged in or looked at the accounts. And then what is the plan with that information moving forward in utilizing that resource? Well, yeah, I think that'd be a great discussion, but definitely, yeah, get the, uh, how often it's used. That's great to learn for any of your tools because it could be we just have to go about communication differently too, or make, make other changes, but we need the data first. All right, Leslie, were you able to get that? <laughs> Anything else for future comment or sorry, considerations for future comments? No? Okay. Jason, I have a terrible note from the other day that I was going to um, go back to revisiting the uh, future questions regarding the uh, gradual graduation requirements. And I don't remember what exactly we were talking about, but I know that we wanted to like readdress the graduation requirements and, and kind of go over that again. And if anybody has any more questions to ask uh, and hopefully get some answers for those. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. Um, that is a good point. I remember that's come up in the agenda setting meeting. Um, uh, and I think board, I think that's where we need to hear from you if there's more that we need to dive into that. Um, I know that we were, um, yeah, I'm not, I know just for clarification, I, I just, yeah, I'm, if there's any board members that need more information on that, I think we do need to address that as a board. So, and that's what I was hearing from you, Mike, is your, are you requesting that or are you just, yeah, I think we were discussing that during that board agenda meeting to have it in yeah okay. coming up one of the next board meetings to be able to answer those questions and things like that perfect okay so yeah i think for clarification that's great so i think that is a, a consideration let's add that to um, future considerations and if i remember right ginger we would need to come up with some very specific questions um, we want to be very mindful of our especially if we would ever to ask counseling staff or others to step out to come to our board meeting we'd want to really make sure those questions are are created in advance um, so that way they can prepare responses. Um, Ginger, any yeah. clarifications with that? Uh, no, but a, a topic too uh, is I do think we need to have a board retreat in February uh, around um, just looking at our budget priorities and we need to have a chance to share with you uh, our current budget and some of the things we're thinking about. So I'll have Leslie kind of reach out to you to see kind of what your availability is and uh, I think that's something we'll need to do in February. I don't think we'll be able to wait until the first week in March. Can we have a doodle sent out? Yes. A doodle so we can pick one more. Yeah, I'll have Ad Leslie do a doodle poll. Sounds good. Thank you. Great suggestion. And I would tend to suggest that it, that it be, if possible, After, after the new board member is selected so that if I'm still around, I could go, but the new board member seems more important than me for that purpose. I don't know if it fits the schedule for the budget, but, and I was also gonna say on the graduation requirements piece, I mean, my, my recollection from the last meeting was that I wanted to hear more about it too, but I remember that Ginger said, it wasn't timely until X, which I forget what X was. I mean, it was like it needed to come up at some other time. We were going to be addressing graduation requirements again. I don't remember what I might have written it down, but not that we couldn't answer questions, but that we didn't need to have another big discussion of it until something triggered it. 
No, I'm confused. I, do know that I don't remember it that way, but oh, oh Jonathan. Well, oh no, I do remember there was a discussion about like what can we actually change and get more detail on that. I remember that we said it was uh, worthy of a discussion, and uh, Bo Snow was very um, forward with that and very, very awesome with his time and suggestions. So thankful that we can have that discussion and talk about opportunities for our high school students. All right, thank you, board. Anything else? Did we, we skipped over no executive session? No, so that was the next item. So no, no executive session. All right, anything for board calendar? We do have the, we are anticipating the February, March retreat. And then you were wanting to us to kind of confirm some dates for you. We'll put out a doodle poll so you guys can fill that out and we'll find a time that's going to be best for them. Great, that sounds perfect. Um, any clarification and next steps? Oh, no. I was just going to say we might have to be flexible with our next meeting if we have a lot of comments and a lot of people want to talk more about the uh, boundaries. So I wanted to say. Not that I don't mind like being here till 11 or something. But, you know. <laughs> yes, that's a really good point. And I think we, we may need to plan that because there could be two topics that could bring out a lot of people, right? Uh, potentially at our next board meeting. So this gym's pretty big. So we'll have to, to figure, those, figure some of those pieces out in advance. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so no other clarifications and next steps. Um, signing of official documents, I have some, does the rest of the board, so yes, board, don't leave tonight until you've signed off on your documents. Um, that leads us to adjournment. I will take a, I entertain a motion. I move that we adjourn. A second. All right, Jonathan has moved, we adjourn, and Mike has seconded. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Have a good evening.